Big Stevie Cool 1872 back again and here we're going to be talking about the January transfer window we're going to be looking at it I can't quite do a tier list normally I would like to do a tier list of these sort of things but obviously you have to wait like a year or you know to the summer because we've done that with quite pretty much every transfer window dating back to god it's been quite but was it the 14 15 season I've done it to I can't remember I need to bring that back I need to go a bit further back than that old school days but um yeah let's talk about the current days the new school days because we had the January window passing. A lot of people aren't happy. I'm include. I'm in, I'm including myself in that. So we'll talk about the, the completed deals so far, and then we'll talk about the ones that failed or just didn't even happen. So we're going to kick off with Fabio Silva, of course, signed at the back end of December. Uh, obviously for January, he's played a few games. He looks all right. We signed him as a striker, even though he's not an all-out striker. He scored no goals for us. And let's be real, he's had. I mean, he played against Dumbarton. He, pl he came on against Kelly. He's had opportunities to score. Does he look very technical, very good on the ball? Yes. Is he our goal-scoring answer? No. He's not the fix to our problems. He's nowhere near the fix to our problems. I mean, I'm not, I can give him a rating based on what I think they'll do. I'm going to give him a C. Because I thought, you know what, this guy will be good for the Europa League run. You know, But there's talk today that he might not even get put into the squad for the Europa League. And it's like, well, we can put three new people in. Talk is Diamonde, Cortez, and um, what's the guy called? Oh, well, what's the guy called? Best left back in the world, Red Van Yilmaz. That's his name. So, I mean, I think it would be suicidal to go into Europa League's end run to the end of the season without having another striker in there. That can't happen. But the rate Fabio Silva, I'm going to give him a C. I think there's a bit of potential to unlock there in the next few months. So. We'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Up next, we've got Mohamed Diamonde, of course. The other two signings haven't played a game for us, so it's hard to, you know, kind of base. But what we've seen, you know, the hype around this kid, he looks really good. Looks like a proper, what we should be doing in the future. Buy these young prospects, get a great couple of years out of them, sell them for big money. In an ideal world, it wouldn't be like that, guys. We'd be, you know, be able to buy the best players in the world, but this ain't the 90s, so, come on. As it's the 2020s, and it's not going to happen like that. I mean, we'd all want to sign like Messi, and Cole, or Haaland, Mbappe. You know, the, the links of being once there, putting bids in for best player in the world like R9, they're long gone. Like, you know, sign Aaron Ramsey on loan, and links to like Batch Y, I think that's probably, probably the pinnacle of what we can do, if I'm being brutally honest. I mean, yes, I think there is other things we could do, like... You know, say Calvin Bassey went on to be like, you know, top five centre back in the world. Maybe when his career dies down a wee bit and he gets older, he'd want to come back to us. But I think that's just the reality of the Scottish game. We can't pretend that we, we've missed out on these world-class players. But, you know, for what we could have got, I think we could have got better. For Mamma Diame, I'm going to give it a B. I think it's a good signing. But the reality is we forked out quite a bit of money to get him. That I think should have been used in other areas of the pitch. And moving on to Oscar Cortez, of course, the final signing, which they dragged out the deadline day to soften the blow of signing no one else. But uh, this guy, right, let's talk about him. I think this guy is going to be relatively easy to create because the lack of a winger that we've had in that position for so long is going to just make the signing seem a lot better than what he is. That's not to downplay him. I mean, four games this season, one goal, one assist. The Lens manager hasn't really fancied him. I mean, he was signed for four million for on paper, the second best team in Ligue 1. We can't take that. I mean, yeah, people can pretend it's a Diddy League, but it's not even that bad Ligue 1. Uh, and I'm not even saying that because we've signed the guy from it. I've always said this. Yeah, it's not as good as the Bundesliga. It's not as good as Serie A. It's not as good as the Premier League. But the reality is, I mean, we're making out the... It's a piss poor league. You'd be, the way you'd listen to some people, it's almost like if we, you know, had like a Champions League final against like Lens, Lyon or Marseille or something. <laughs> like Marseille anyway but they would be like ah oh, be a piece, piece of piss it's like the Scottish Cup third round or something honestly it's ridiculous but uh, I rate him I'm, I'm going to give him a B he looks quite talented I think he'll help he'll help out anyway it's part of the video I wanted to get to and who we didn't sign of course Yefty that deal absolutely collapsed I'm, I would have loved to have seen him for the final five months of the season I would have absolutely would have um, but the reality is with that probably 
I mean, guaranteed Yilmaz getting kept, potentially. But I don't think Yilmaz was going anywhere, man. Every bid was getting rejected. It's not like there was signs there that Yilmaz was definitely going if a bid, if he came in. So I'm not too convinced by that. Also, kind of looks like we will keep Yilmaz. We'll get rid of Barisic in the summer and we'll bring in Yefty. Because I think getting rid of two players at left back and trying to like completely rebuild that position is a potential risk. Um, so, no bad in that element there for you. I'm not too bored about falling through, to be honest. But in terms of everything else, strikers. Right, let's talk about strikers. So, Michi Batshuayi, Shanklint, Fan Fien, whoever we may talk about. And someone said on Twitter, and I've said it before on this channel, we are de we are one chance Fidesz missing in a big game from the fan base imploding. And to be honest, most of the time I look on Twitter, comment section, everyone agrees saying that we do need another striker. And I'm just not buying the whole money gimmick, by the way, about we don't have the money to sign Shankland. I can buy that part, yeah, but what's the excuse no getting fan fee? What what is the actual excuse? See, I'm sick of people turning up their nose. We've got fucking no number nines at this club. They're all injured, right? Or they're pish. So what the f what are we doing? Honestly, I think if you bring Fan Fien in, man, he's going to guarantee us. I mean, look at the goals he scored from Motherwell. He is... And I actually think he's going to cost us. I think he's going to score goals against us at Rugby Park coming up. Hope I'm fucking wrong, but I can see that happening. I don't want to talk about Shankland too much. I thought he gave me a pack. I think it's a disgrace we didn't go and sign Fan Fien and Shankland. Either one of them, especially Shankland. Two guys, top goal scorer. It's a, it's, a, it's a catastrophe is what it is. Honestly, man. Anyway, wrapping this up. I think we've lost the league. Long way to go, but I think we signed. I'm not saying if we signed. I mean, Fan Fiend would have had a similar effect to Shankland, but I think the league would have been in the palm of our hands, honestly, if we had signed one of them. But no. We've pissed it away.